Hi, Madonna here and Shelby. We're going to do a balance today about um, controlling moods. So when we start to lose it, when we've been bullied, when there's been emotional abuse in the past, sometimes it's easy to whip into anger and emotional gear and uh, and not be able to talk to people about it and not feel comfortable with communication. So we'll sort of see where that all leads us. Because um, sometimes we just end up being in our own little world and the less we communicate, the more we start to implode on a, and explode to ourselves and others. So with, um, there's a few personal power statements that I sort of thought we'd start with and see whether or not, cute socks. Yeah. <laughs> Pineapple heads. I love cute socks. Yeah. So I'll just sort of have a look. For a start, let's just check everything's working. Hold, beautiful. Hold in, don't let me pull out. Hold out, don't let me pull in. Good. And I'll just check switching. Hold, that's good. Okay, so now let's just see. I no longer react to things. I respond, allowing me to stay in my personal power and hold, okay. Uh, I am happy being me, and hold, that was okay. I am at ease with myself now and always, and hold, okay. Okay, so the unlocks are the ones obviously we need to work on. Are there, is there anything more we need in order to get into the circuit? There is something else. So another, another affirmation. Yeah, right, so something about grounding. So when we're feeling stressed, we don't feel grounded. When we're feeling stressed, we're less likely to go out and get the sunshine and outside sort of all that stuff that helps us stay grounded yeah right my grounding allows me clear thinking hold up nice and strong not yet anyway okay Okay, so firstly, what is the amygdala point that's driving everything, an old pain and punishment circuit? Okay, so this is a um, concern pattern, so it's when our outward focus starts being on other people instead of ourselves, when we start being concerned. That sort of happens between 6 and 13 years old, we just start becoming more and more, you know, the little carers. <laughs> and uh, where it's got jammed, is the inability to feel belonging or the inability um, or the exhaustion from feeling responsible from other people. So it's an old pain and punishment circuit. Let's pulse that. Now let's check out the adrenal glands and hold, that's okay, hold, that's okay. Survival switching, hold. Deep survival, hold. Hidden deep survival, hmm, okay. Not where we need to go. So do we need to go into the brain pathways? Do I need to check logic and gestalt? No. So, um, okay, so let's just check some connections between left and right sides of the brain. Hold out for me. Right, so that's the corpus callosum. Connects us two sides of the brain. And when we're under 30% functional between the two sides, that's when we feel anxious and stressed and angry and prone to nervous breakdowns. And it's fear driving that shutdown. Oh, because that's a fear threat danger amygdala point. And hold, so let's check trust and trust issues. And hold. That's okay. Communication and communication issues. And hold. Yeah, right. 
brain would rather run away than communicate. Okay, so there's actually some other little areas I might check. The Broca's Wernicke's auditory integration points. They're sort of, you know, sometimes when you want to speak, but you lose the ability to say what you're thinking because your brain gets so cluttered. And then by the time it comes out, we either get teary or we get angry or we say it in a way that we weren't expecting to say. So these little areas can all get a little bit jammed. So I'll make sure I connect those. Communication and communication issues. And hold, beautiful. Anterior commissure, hold. In relation to sadness, despondency, depression. And hold, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, sadness is sort of in the earth energy sort of thing, but anger's over here in liver energy. Sort of wonder how that's driving the energy around the body. Um, okay, sadness, despondency, depression. And hold, beautiful. So let's also check communication in relation to the anterior commissure. And hold, yeah. The threat danger. It's amazing how the brain shuts down under stress, eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> because I, I always think that the brain is doing something for a reason, and then you think, well, surely communication is a survival skill as well, so why would your brain shut down the ability to? But I suppose it doesn't, does it? It makes us either cry and get attention or get angry so that we say what we need to say or have a, have a, even having a panic attack or an anxiety attack maybe that gives our nervous system that bit of support we need or something but maybe hmm, interesting feels wondering You're always wondering <laughs> so in relation to communication and hold beautiful let's check our fear of failure in the hippocampus and hold yeah that's an old pain and punishment circuit as well oh that one was set up young that was between nine months and three years old yeah messed with the self-confidence and assertiveness and messed with the ability to say no Yeah, so the hippocampus is a memory centre and so the brain will shut it down under survival things so that the amygdala can just kick in and do whatever it needs to do, fight and flight or running away, escape, submission, freeze. Okay, so in relation to fear of failure in the hippocampus and hold, good, and we'll check fear of success. Yeah, so exactly the same fear threat danger. Brains between a rock and a hard place. Between fear of failure, fear of success. I might check fear of communication as well. Beautiful. 
and fear of communication. And hold. Okay. And hold, beautiful. Okay, so now let's have a look. Actually, is there anything else that we need in relation to the hippocampal sphere? Okay, so there's like um, a fear of boasting, a fear of confidence. So let's check. Um, Fear of showing confidence. Oh, so that could be, you know, the whole tall poppy thing, doing well, some, doing well at something and being fearful of showing that we're good at something. Unless we've been bullied on for actually doing something well, and then that will do the fear of can you know, create the fear of success, fear of showing confidence. Showing confidence. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Okay. So the next hippocampal circuit. And hold. Okay. So that's memory shut down when we're not getting any pleasure or reward out of it. So why would our brain bother remembering if there's nothing in it for us? And two things are going on there, fear, threat, danger, as well as the pleasure reward centers being um, deactivated. So the brain's deliberately creating stress so that we don't accidentally relax and have fun when we're supposed to be keeping ourselves safe. Perfect. And hold. So this one is old pain and punishment circuits messing with the memory centers. The reason the memory is important, the hippocampus, uh, for the last 12, 13 years, everything I've done with it has been related to memory. But it's often emotional gear that shuts down those memory pathways. But with research they're doing into Alzheimer's and dementia, they're sort of looking at the shrunken hippocampus as being one of the reasons why people really get um, angry, you know, people with dementia can lose their, their temper and become quite violent in some cases. So the hippocampus is now being linked in with more emotional gear, but I wonder whether it's as the hippocampus shrinks, other parts of the body like the amygdala have to take over, you know. I don't know, you know, which comes first, the chicken or the egg thing. Yeah. So that one was short-term memory being shut down when we're in an old pain and punishment circuit. Actually, I might just check in relation to the size and mass of the hippocampus. Just ask. Hold out for me. So it may already have started. Because I'm sure stress and anxiety are one of the reasons why the hippocampus just starts to shrink. There were some studies that show that once by the time dementia is found, quite often the hippocampus is as low as 9% of the size that it should be. So really quite dehydrated and poor blood supply and 
to no wonder they don't remember things at that point. Okay, so the size and mass of the hippocampus. And again, hold, beautiful. Okay, so let's go into long-term memory. And hold, yeah, so this time it's um, long-term memory being shut down, so harder to access old things. Sometimes, you know, um, one of the funny things is when we're having stress or panic or anxiety or anger or whatever, sometimes we forget what we know. So in that moment, we forget all the good stuff we've done, we forget all the bonuses we've had, we forget the um, wins that we've had, and all we can focus on is that thing in our mind at that very moment that isn't working for us. Because it's there bright as anything. And we can't see anything else, which is interesting because that's when that frontal cortex shuts down. And again, hold, beautiful. And hold, okay. was long-term memory again in relation to an old pain and punishment circuit. So the next circuit showing up is the hippocampus in relation to survival skills. You can shut your eyes, <laughs> relax. <laughs> hippocampus also has formats for danger and survival and amnesia and decisions of life or death importance all of those things will affect the, the uh, hippocampus so we'll check them one by one okay and hold okay and hold yes yeah, so I hate the kidney one points on the bottom of the feet are active those ones are to do with danger So it's using that fifth sense. And sometimes that fifth sense can be out of whack, of course, as well, and make everything seem dangerous. It can be the other side of the coin too, and actually um, be creating recklessness in people. But it just indicates that one's out of whack. CB8, oh, not too bad. What about with this one? And hold, yeah, okay. So CB8 on its own wasn't too bad. That's decisions of life and death importance, but when coupled with the danger point, it was a really big unlock. CB14, 
Matthew 22, hold. Governing 26, hold. Heart 1, hold. Right. So heart 1 is about it's that accumulative intuition. So it's when we take information in. And our intuition, we're just not trusting ourselves or believing in ourselves. It's when we think, I should have done this, I could have done that. Because in hindsight, we know what we know. So that one is GB20, so governing vessel 20. And that one is to, um, it's about motivation. So it's when our brain is pretty darn stressed and the stress shuts down the motivation to do anything. And it can also be that paralysis, you know, of what if I make the wrong decision? Everything I'm doing is wrong, so how can I make the right decision? So how can I possibly move forward? And once again, the motivation, it's a combination of um, rage and anger as well as depression. So that combo, because then we get depressed, we're not doing anything, and then we get angry at ourselves because we're not moving forward. You know, just for fun. Now, get you put your hand on your navel. So this asks about old stuff. So now with my hand on top of it, it's, uh, oh, actually, firstly, uh, CV8, hold, that's okay. And hold, yeah. So that combination of CV8 and kidney one with both our hands on there indicates there's an old pattern where the danger kicks in uh, when we have to make a decision and then we put all that life or death importance importance on it. Stress, we're going to make the wrong decision in the circumstance. And hold. Ah, CB14. Hold. Pericardium 1. Hold. CB22, hold, ah, uh, okay. So this one's a secondary memory format. So it's being able to access memory from long-term memory and put it into the area of the brain so that we can access it. And once again, when we're under stress and these little parts of the brain, they shrink, then we can't get blood supply to them. So then while we're under stress, we can't remember anything. As soon as the exam's over or the assignment's finished, or the family get-togethers that was stressful has disappeared, all of a sudden the brain can work well again. CB22, hold. GB26, hold. CB24, hold, okay. So that one's retrograde amnesia, which is just messing with your ability to remember the past. So the thalamus in the brain, which is like a radio signal tower. So it's trying to decide where to put information down all the time. And it's also trying to determine how important things are so that we either choose to lay down memory or we don't. overall in relation to the senses hold that's better okay uh, once again going back through the brain so 
So something about that messed with the anterior commissure. Pull out. We'll reboot that. So we might just check these little memory centers. So firstly, brokers to brokers. So these are little pathways. Okay, so brokers area does lots of things, but the main one that I'm thinking of, it's about the words that come out of our mouth. So the left brokers, because that's the logical side of the brain, it's about the actual lips, the tongue, the physical uh, part of actually getting words out of our mouth. Whereas the right side is about the actual words themselves and whether or not we're having issues speaking our truth. And there's fear, threat, danger in relation to speaking. Once again, brokers to brokers, hold, beautiful. Now the next little guy is called Wernicke's, the Wernicke's areas. And hold, yeah. So those ones are about the thoughts behind the words. And of course our thoughts come from our feelings and our experiences and our beliefs. So if we believe the only way that we can speak up for ourselves is by getting angry, then that's how we present. If we believe that the only way we can get attention is by having stress and anxiety and uh, panic attacks then that's what the body will do so the body will do whatever it needs to to be able to find a solution in the moment but it's fear threat danger shutting that down as well okay Wernicke's to Wernicke's hold beautiful the next one is auditory integration points hold also not optimal okay so there's with this one as well so they're all fifth row danger uh, so these ones the auditory integration points it puts together all of the information that we hear and then it also decides where it's going to put that information in the brain and how we retrieve stuff that we've heard before as well so not only is it about the information we're hearing comprehending taking it in but it's also about grabbing those memories of stuff we've heard in the past And this is where talking on the phone to some, you know, these days, uh, I think we hear contralaterally. So if someone's on our left side, we hear it on the left, but then it goes across to the other side of the brain. So, and the right side's the emotional side of the brain, the left side's the logical side of the brain. So therefore, if we are, uh, if we're stressed talking to someone, we really should hold the phone to the right side of the brain because then the information will go across to the logical side of the brain and we won't be so stressed talking to them. That's if we're right-handed and we have logic in the left hemisphere of the brain and gestalt in the right hemisphere of the brain. All of that's opposite if we're wired correctly and we're left-handed. Okay, so auditory to auditory. And again, hold, beautiful. And auditory integration points and hold. Okay, well, none of these were working. So these ones are called rip and lip, they're the left integration point and the right integration point. And these ones are about all of your short and long term visual and auditory incoming and outgoing memories. <laughs> so they're fairly important. And then we'll just get corpus callosum. Beautiful. Let's go through all the major pathways, make sure they're all working. Beautiful. Okay, so let's see how we went. 
with those little goals. My grounding allows me clear thinking. Hold. When I use my intuition, I stay grounded. Hold. My grounding is an important aspect of my life. Hold. Yeah, so that's all nice. And the other one was... Once again, let's just double check the adrenals. Hold, hold. Survival switching, hold. Deep survival, hold. Hidden deep survival, hold. Fantastic. And as they say in Harry Potter, mischief managed. <laughs>